That's a really good question. Um, okay, so um, first of all, uh, for many years when you, as a diplomat, thought about Muslims or Islam at the State Department, it was Middle East centric. So you always thought about one region of the world as, as Muslim. There are more Muslims that live outside of the Middle East than in it. That's the first point. How do you understand what's happening with those communities around the world? All things Muslim are not the same. You have to understand the texture and the nuances because that is the only way, as a diplomat, that you be can begin to think about the changes that ne need to, to, to take place. You're not giving dignity to somebody. If you say, oh, you're Muslim, this is what you mean. You all, you all look the same. You all have the same brand of Islam. You're all, all the same. That is so disrespectful in so many ways. I've traveled a lot because I don't want to only just go to one part of the world to say you're the most important. You're talking about strategic interests. Copenhagen, the gr do you, how much do you know about what's happening in Denmark with, with, with Muslims? Or Oslo, or Stockholm, or London, or Madrid, or Milan, or Vienna. Unbelievable shifts in paradigm is taking place on the ground because of several things that are taking place in Europe. You have right-wing movements that are taking place, not just about Muslims. You have generations of second and third and fourth generations who are, that are Muslims that are born in Europe that are feeling isolated from the norm. You're seeing an increase in disparity in terms of jobs in the workplace for people who have qualifications. You're seeing an increase of a misunderstanding of what it means to be Muslim among a generation that will only go to one part of the world to say, if I'm Muslim, I must be this. Very problematic. Al-Qaeda would like you to believe that all things Muslim are this. That's their whole, that's their bread and butter right then and there, right? If you are Muslim, you've got to believe this. You can't have any views other than your else. Islam is really diverse. There are 1.6 billion people on the planet that don't have all have the same opinion on various things. There are different types of Islam. As an American foreign policy objective, we want to pay dignity across the world, not just to Sunni, not just to Shia, not just to Ismailis, not just to Sufis. Not we are looking broadly at what it means to be Muslim and respectfully in terms of what it means to be Muslim. The growing trends in Western Europe, 30 million Muslims in Western Europe alone, that trend is growing. How they impact the culture and the society and the politics is going to make a difference to our national security as we understand the trends of radicalization that's happening with affiliated groups from Al-Qaeda and what's happening in Europe that's making a difference to our foreign policy. You saw the news last wi week with uh, London and uh, Paris and Berlin. You also see, under, uh, underscoring all of this, a growing division, I'll talk very specifically about the Nordic countries, between genders. The men in these countries who are Muslim are not getting very well educated. The women, on the other hand, are moving up the lines. They're pushing really hard. What is going to happen? Think about sociologically what it will happen to these, these groups. What women in the Nordic countries are telling me is, who are we going to marry? If we want to marry within our faith, we're doctors, we're lawyers, we're school teachers, we're professors. These are men who are uneducated. I could go on for a long time about the issues that are taking place in Europe. It is a very important part of our national security. It is a critical part of our national security, not just because of the, th of the terrorist threat, but about how it changes the fabric of what it means to be European, what the issues are that come to bear. For the first time in history, the United Kingdom has a Muslim as part of their cabinet, Bar Baroness Worsey. How are the changing faces of Europeans thinking about various foreign policy issues, they, they affect our bottom line. So Cairo, Egypt, sorry, Egypt is very important to us. I'm not saying it's not. But to say that all things Muslim must be driven by A, either the Middle East peace process or driven by issues that are very specific like water or various other things that are happening in that part of the world is really problematic. We have to be honest about what the things are that are taking place across the world.